Look how weird this has been. 8,000. We just need to go, what, 8,000? W get H. Is that right or is that just tripping out? Oh my goodness. All right, I'm just going to run it and see what happens. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the channel. If you see my mum walk past, make sure you say hello. If you're new here, my name's Ash. I'm 27. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast. And on this channel, we play Capture the Flags and we learn together on our way to being a cybersecurity professional. On today's video, we are going over another Try Hack Me room called Wiggle CTF. W-G-E-L-C-T-F. If you need links for the timestamps or anything else, uh, see the description below and let's get into it. All right, so we are logged in on Try Hack Me and we're at our room. Can you exfiltrate flag? So there's a single task with two subtasks in here. We have a user flag we're looking for and we have a root flag. So this is an easy box. Let's go ahead and click start machine. We'll get on the try hack me network. Great, so that looks like it's working. All right, and we've got our IP for the box we're looking at. Uh, it might take a couple more minutes just to, all right, there it is. Let's go ahead and do a rust scan. Awesome, so we have our port 22, which is commonly known for SSH and 84 HTTP. So we have a web server. So looking at our questions, we are looking for some sort of user information to find their flag. So out of our two options, our sort of lowest hanging fruit for us to do more enumeration on is going to be that web server. And we can confirm that it is running HTTP. So let's go ahead and open up Firefox. Okay, so it looks just like an Apache 2 default page. So there's nothing of interest right in front of us. So a good step is to always hit Control U and look at our view source. We're looking for comments, maybe somebody's left something something behind, maybe there's something unusual in here. First of all, we've just got some CSS. Um, this commented code is what we see in here. So that's nothing too interesting, but we do get Jesse. Don't forget to up you date or update this website. So remember, we are looking for a user flag. So here is a user name, assumably. So we might be able to use that a bit later so we can save that off. So it doesn't look like there's anything else here. So let's go ahead and run a GoBuster scan. So we'll use the dir module and we'll just use the common txt file inside sec lists. Great, so it took about a minute for GoBuster to complete that and we've got a server status um, that we can't access with a 403. We have 200 that we were looking at, but we do have a sitemap that's just giving a 301 to this. So let's go ahead and open that up, but just by holding the control button and clicking. And it looks like we have some sort of other web application that's been put on this sitemap directory. So super unusual. This is a bit weird to find this. So this is definitely something worth exploring. So as always, let's just go for a quick control U to see if there's anything out of the ordinary in here. Just by quickly scrolling through, this does just look like a really boilerplate. Um, so we'll go ahead and further enumerate so let's hit the up arrow and we'll run this GoBuster scan again, but this time let's just target the sitemap directory. Okay, so in a couple seconds, we see that in sitemap, there is this .sh, Oi. control click, and we have an id underscore rsa file. Now, this is a private key that we can use to log in, commonly used with SSH connections. So, so far with this room, we've been provided a user, which was on the website server on port 80. And now within this sitemap directory, we've been given a key. So this is essentially like the password to get in as this user. So with these two things, we basically have enough to try an SSH into this box. So to give it a go, let's go ahead and copy this key. It's going to nano a new file, paste that in with control shift V, control X, Y to save. And we've got our key. I'm just put it into a temporary folder. So now we can log in as Jess at this IP and to pass through a, a private key, an RSA private key like we have, we just use the dash I and then we just refer to the file that I just created and I put in the temporary directory. It's going to ask us yes. And it said our permissions are wrong. We should have the permissions 0644. So let's go ahead and change that. We can go to change mod. We can go 600 and that's going to give the correct permissions. So just to quickly explain that, if we look at the current permissions, before we change it, we've got read, write, read, read. Now we've changed the permissions to 600 and we can see that it's just re 
read and write for us and then nothing for anybody else. So this is the correct permissions that SSH is looking for. So now if we run this command again, we're just in straight away. So that's all we have to do to be able to actually use our RSA key that we've been given. So great. So now we need to sort of look around as this user and let's see if we've been given anything right away. So we've got this examples.desktop. What we can do with ls asterisk is we can just look in recursively into all of our directories and we can see here in documents we've actually got this user flag. So let's go cat out our user flag here. Great, so that's one. We can copy that and we can go ahead and paste that into try hack me. Awesome, so we're 50% there. Next up, we're looking for the root flag. So if we ls our home directory, we don't have any other directories for users. So a key thing to always run is sudo dash l. That's gonna tell us any other files that we can run as a sudo user. So it looks like here we can have this wget. So looking at the wget-h or the help page, it's a non-interactive network retriever. So we can use this to retrieve other things. Okay, so with knowing that, we can basically run that and get anything over onto the system. Let's go hit Control Shift R. So what I want to do is to figure out what else is on this box by getting something over onto this machine. So if you haven't heard of LinPs before, it's a Linux privilege escalation awesome script linpeas. So we need to download this, get this onto our box and run it to see if there's anything else, any other way that we can priv esque our user. So it says here to go to the releases page, we can go ahead and right click this copy link right on the shell script and we can run wget just on our local system here to get that. Great, so just confirming because sometimes I copy the wrong thing over GitHub and I just get like a actual web page, not the actual file. So it's a good idea to run file against it, make sure we got the right thing. Great, so what we're essentially gonna do is run, spin up a quick Python web server here so we can copy from our local system over to our remote system. We just run python-mhtp.server, that'll start up on port 8000. Control Shift D, and we just need to go ifconfig to get this IP. This is the local IP. So what this is going to do is we're gonna run wget http. See how everything's gone weird? Whoa, look how weird it goes. Why is it this happen when I use the multi-terminal thing. Whack, whack, put in the IP address and we're going to go for linpeas.sh. Look how weird this has been. 8,000, we just need to go for 8,000. W get H, is that right? Or is that just tripping out? Oh my goodness. Right, I'm just gonna run it and see what happens. Cool, okay, so we have the get request. And if we look here, we now have linpeas. So that's our file. So we didn't even need to use w get, but like as sudo, maybe there's another exploit. Anyway, we just need to add execution by going plus X um, to linpeas. And then we can go ahead and run linpeas on this system. We have a nice little legend here. So if it is red and highlighted with yellow, it's a 95% potential attack vector. So that's probably what's uh, gonna be what we're after. So straight out of the gate, we have a CVE 2021-4034. So if we do a little bit of searching, we will come across this CVE um, that we found our machine is vulnerable to. The actual vulnerability we can read a little bit more about. So this application Pult Kit, formerly Policy Kit, is a component for controlling system-wide privileges in Unix-like operating systems. It provides an organized way for non-privileged processes to communicate with privileged ones. It is also possible to use Pult Kit to execute commands with elevated privileges using the command PXE or PK execute, followed by the command intended to be executed with root permissions. So even though that might not make total sense, at least we can sort of understand that there's a fault with one of the programs that are built into this operating system. So not only do we have a bit of information about it, but we actually have the exploit itself. So if we go over to this C program, we go ahead and get the raw file and we can copy that link. But back on our local system, we can wget that. I'm just gonna put that into the temporary folder. So we've downloaded that. So we'll just move over into our temporary folder where I put it and we'll run 
we'll run that web server again. So then on our remote system, let's run the same wget before, but instead of linps, we're gonna be going after this and we can paste that in. We see our get request and we can see we've got that on the remote system now. So showing us in this example, we can run ID and we can see what user we are currently. Uh, so we already know that we're Jesse, but we'll just follow it. Then we're gonna compile the C program. So we can just copy that word for word. It's gonna compile it and output it to this. So we can see here, now we have uh, an actual executable that we can run. So then the last step is just to actually run it. So we can do it just like so. And then our prompt has changed. So by running ID again, we are indeed root. Can confirm that by who am I? So that is how we've now escalated our privileges. If we list out what is in the root directory, there is our root flag. So let's go ahead and get that. Great, so there's our flag, so we can copy that. We go ahead and paste that in. And there it is, that is our Capture the flag that we've just done. Wiggle, wiggle. I don't even know how to say it, but hey, we did it. This was a very fun room. This is actually one of the first rooms where I didn't really look at hints and I just sort of understood the flow of what I was trying to do to break into this. So yeah, um, I'm proud of myself on this one. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. I would like to know what rooms you are up to, whether it's on Try Hack Me, Hack the Box or whatever. What rooms are you currently doing? I've got a link up on the screen to my previous try hack me walkthrough of bedrock that was live i was doing it for the first time on camera with you so go ahead and watch that and let me know your thoughts otherwise i will see you in the next one All right, bye